What is going on guys? Apathy back in the building with another video today. I am very excited to be presenting you SD class setup video. Now to make things better, I have 10 classes. I made two whole new class setups to have all 10 classes and I'm going to go really thoroughly and really in depth with all these classes and give you a lot of tips and help you out, you know, when it comes to making classes. So make sure to watch the full video. So before we continue with this video, I talked about in my respawn class setup how important stock is. So on most, on most of my subclasses, you will see me running stock. And that's just because it's so essential, especially when it comes to 1v1 in SD. If the other person has stock and you don't, you are going to die most of the time unless you get him in a good position or unless you're in, you, you attack from above or some weird angle. But stock helps you win those gunfights easily. So this is kind of my secret class that I use once in a while. I'm going to keep testing it out and using it more. But basically, I use only crew grip and stock, which allows me two extra points because I'm not using quick draw. And the reason I use these two is because quick draw doesn't help improve subs that much compared to an AR. Like, it helps, obviously, you aim down sight a little quicker, but it's not that big of a difference. So sometimes I just use these two. It's not the craziest difference. On top of that, I get two extra points, which can be put anywhere. Maybe a second perk, maybe some points of tacticals. So in this class, I do use a smoke and a frag grenade. And now smokes and SD could be very helpful when it comes to pushing a lane, when it comes to pushing a bomb. When it comes to, you know, blocking a lane, let's say there's an AR in the back, like in fringe, all the way in the back, holding it, you smoke him out, he's useless, the only person who can shoot you is top board or maybe guy fences, automatically opens possibilities. I want to see smoke being used more in S&D, which it might be, I think, towards the end of the year, but it's definitely a good thing. And then a frag, of course, you know, get those random nade kills, you know, frags can help you get those first bloods, which can be a big game changer. And of course, on most of my subs, I run afterburner, fast hands, pretty much a must. And in this class, which most of your SD classes, you want to run Blast Suppressor and Death Silence. Now, this is more of my aggressive sub and, you know, kind of my flak jacket class. This is what I consider my flak jacket class. So, I'm not using stock. Like I said, it could be a big game changer. But sometimes, depending on your position, depending on how you position yourself, you know, it's not that big of a deal sometimes. So, I'm just going to be using Quick Draw Grip. I'm using Blast Suppressor and Death Silence and Flak Jacket Afterburner. This is my class if, let's say, I know they have an RC... Or they call it in a dart, or I want to push something really aggressive. You know, I have pretty much everything I need to stay alive. Now, this is my basic stack sub rush class. The only problems I do not have flag jacket, but I do have afterburner, fast has blast versus death silence. The only difference between the other class, which I just showed you, is flag jacket. And instead, I have stock on. Like I said, stock could be really good. This is more like I said, my stack sub class. When it comes to you know, maybe I'm not playing well. You know, I just pull out this class to really work out my kills, really work out, you know, just the map, get some map control. And this is more of a, you know, a, like a challenge class. You know, just make sure, this is like, this is pretty much like a kill horde class. Like, I'm not running any attacks, I'm not really helping the team out any way, but it can help me get some kills. Now, for my MA class, I'm going to have two similar classes. I use Reflex and SD a lot lately because before I used to use ELO, which it's not the craziest thing. But one thing I noticed, especially the type of player I am. Reflex helps me more in s and I don't know why, it just does. So I definitely rather run Reflex and Search. I'm going to keep trying it out, but it's, it's been working for me. Then I got Quick Draw. Some people like to use uh, Long Barrel over Quick Draw. But after recently, you know, I'm starting to get used to these three attachments only. Long Barrel can be a little game changer, like Fringe or maybe Infection. But, you know, it, it depends. Like, sometimes you can even do this. You can substitute Death Silence, like, on maps like Fringe and Infection, where you're challenging long gunfights. And unless you're in a clutch position... Like a 1v2, 1v3, then it might hurt you. But even then, like, you could do this. You could say, take off that and put on barrel. And then this could be your class, let's say, an affection. You go top of the cliff, challenge down the street. You know, you have long barrel now, so it can help you. But other than that, I don't think taking out quick draw is a good thing. I'd rather just keep this class. And then, of course, the RK5. Some people like to use the L car. Lately, I used to, I like, at a certain point, I was loving the L car. And then it just started becoming really inconsistent for me. So I just started using RK5 again. RK5 is a beast. Sometimes it just melts like crazy. I don't know. It could be you, like you can literally one burst hit fire someone. It's crazy. And then a similar copy class. The only difference is I run flag jacket. And this class is, like I said, I know they have streaks. You always want to switch out these classes. If you know they have maybe an RC, maybe a dart. You know they're about to call it in. You saw they had it, you know, or they call it in and you switch classes really fast and forward the time because you can switch classes until 115. So you use flag jacket class, and this is the class I switch for. I'm a really afterburner player. Like I love running afterburner, whether it's S and D, anything. I just love boosting around. You know, challenge aggressive, flying out, having my thrusters available almost at all times. But flag jacket, obviously, I do not want to die by an RC or a dart. That's a useless death on my part. That's completely stupid. 100% I should be running flag if they call that in. 
and if not then I gotta play my life but this is the only difference between these two now on to the next class set so I got five more classes to talk about and show you guys now this class is more I guess for like wagers or if stuns or flashes are available this is a very uh, known class you know basically you run attack mask and death silence obviously you know when you boost there's tricks to boosting some of you may know but if you slide slide even though it makes a sound if you don't have blast press and you slide it does not appear on the radar you can also slide and as soon as you use your thrust meter and you start jumping around you can test it in the private game it does not show up on the radar so not having blast suppressor isn't the worst thing in the world obviously there could be situations where it might hurt you but you know these two death signs and tactical mask really good especially when it comes to if they're running stuns or something like that and like i said this is more of like a stack subclass because you guys see i do have to attach them on with afterburner this is more like oh, i'm gonna rush this i'm gonna try to kill this guy here and i just have the you know the, the, what I need, what I really need to, uh, to kill that guy. Now, this is my next class. Only quick draw, grip, and the difference is I am using Blast Suppressor and Attack Mask with two stuns. Now, essentially, what I said earlier, or the last the last thing I just said was, you know, not having Blast Suppressor isn't the biggest thing, right? Like, it, it doesn't hurt you that much. You know, you can kind of play with it. You can kind of bait with it. It's not the worst. But sometimes not having Death Silence is not the biggest thing, especially if you're playing a 4v4 search, 4v4. You know, when it comes to team, when it comes to 4v4, especially like in the pro league or like a big S and D players, like you usually push stuff out together, or usually in a position where you can trade. So, not having dead signs isn't the biggest thing because usually, like you're gonna position yourself where you're not gonna be heard or you're gonna be in a trading position. So sometimes not having that silence, you're gonna don't think, oh, I'm gonna get sound horde. I need that silence. It's not essentially that. If you guys watch pro players play, they don't always run that silence, especially when it comes to team pushes. And this class is more like a team push. So I have two stuns on top of that if stuns are allowed. Basically, attack mass, two stuns in case they don't have tag, and then blast suppressor. No dead silence. I mean, if you really, really need that silence, then you can switch off maybe one of these for dead silence. But this is the type of class I rock. It's like anti-stun class. Plus, I got stuns on my Back. So back to what I was saying, this is my other subclass, my third one in this class set, and I got Quick Draw, Grip, and Stock. It's another stack class, not necessarily, you know, like I said, Stock is really, really important in SD, mainly on the VMP. Like, don't get it twisted, It's because the VMP without Stock is really bad, so it helps a lot on the VMP, and obviously you kind of want it on ARs, blah, blah, blah. But don't think, oh, I need to run it on the CUDA, I need to run it on any sub. It's mainly the VMP. And then, of course, I got an EMP and a Semtex. This is more if stuns aren't allowed, then obviously I run this class. EMPs are really good in SD to EMP check stuff. Sometimes, even you might want to run double EMPs. You know, EMP checking stuff in SD can be really helpful because, let's say, you're scared. Like, oh, maybe there's a guy in this area. Maybe there's a guy in top mansion. Maybe there's a guy in top barn. Maybe there's a guy in small room. You simply chuck an EMP and boom. You know if a guy's there or not. And if he is there, there's a chance, you know, you double team up with your teammates or he runs away. Now it allows you to move up. So EMP checking could be really useful. If not, you can just run like a flag, a frag EMP. This is sometimes I use. And now on top of that, not running that silence. Like I said, when it comes to, this is like more of a push, a push as a team thing. And I don't really need that silence. It's not like, they have to be really close to sound whore you. And like I said, unless you're in really clutch position and, you know, you're playing your corners and you're trying to get sound whore, then it can hurt you. But not having that silence, it's not going to be the end of the world. Like, you can work with it. Now, this is my sniper class. Yes. For people who are wondering what sniper do I use. Obviously, I do use the SVG with the thermal sight. I'm going ahead and put Splice. It's my favorite sight. I kind of like the default, but Splice definitely is a winner. I just like, I love having that little red dot. And then on top of that, I'm going to be using an RK5 with extended mags. The reason I use this is because if overkill is not allowed, which overkill is mainly almost never allowed anymore, you want to have your secondary sort of like a... Like a mini weapon, like a like a mini sub. Like you want it kind of to be like a really good secondary, because obviously if your SVG is not pulling through, someone's rushing you. You want to have something essentially that can help you kill the guy. So obviously you know RK5, the thing has 15 bullets. Uh, you know it can kill someone, but there's times when they eat. There's times where there's two people. There's times where you miss. So putting extended mags, I believe adds six more bullets. So now you have a clip of 21, which allows a lot of room for you to kill two people. Or even if you miss, you know, you definitely get the kill. So that's what I like to do. Some people can even, you can even try elk car with extended mags. I've done that before too. Like I said, lately, just haven't been filled with the elk car, but you guys can try that if you're a fan of the elk car. And then on top of that, just blast the rest of death hands, fast hands, pretty much a must on the sniper. And then I'm running after burden. Now, some people like to change this for flak. Or some people even like to do this. I'm going to show you like a couple like different variations. Some people like to do this after burner. But what a lot of people do, especially you know, when it's a sniper off, they do this. 
Boom, cold blooded. So you kind of countered their sniper. This isn't usually a default class that a lot of snipers use when it's sniper versus sniper. But I personally don't do all that junk. I just simply put extended mags and then I put a stun. And the reason is stuns are usually allowed in wagers. Now, if I'm playing a tournament or I'm playing like uh, in a CW match or something and I want to snipe, then I'll essentially probably change this to an EMP or change this to a frag grenade. You know, just having that one tactical could help. Some people like putting their uh, stock in their sniper too. You could change that for stock. I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of stock yet. I know it can help a little bit, but stock is just not that big of a difference. I'll see as it goes. But this is my sniper class. And, you know, you can try it out. And my final class before I go, it's going to be another MA class, but a little bit different this time. So, I got what I basically used, Reflex, Quick Draw, Stock, RK5. And then instead of using Dead Silence, and like I said, when you're pushing something with your team, like Infection, Fringe, whatever the case is, you don't really, really, really need Dead Silence, especially when it comes to pushing as a team, because your teammates are there. What's the difference if they hear you or not? They know you're there. And by, by they, I mean the enemies know. Like, if the enemies are pushing out B Street, they know you're there. They're going to see you. But, you know, it just, like I said, it might hurt you when it comes up to a clutch position. But, so let's say trophies can be really helpful, especially like Infection, B Street, you know, either side, offense or defense. People like always throwing nades down the street. So having a trophy for your teammate, you know, it helps. You can even rock two trophies if you know they're high on tacticals. If not, usually what I like to do is a trophy nade. Just because that nade can help me get a kill, can weaken somebody, can give me some information. You know, so it helps here and there. And then after, obviously after Burner, Fast Hats, and Blast Suppressor. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it's a little bit long, but I hope you guys learned a, new, a couple things. How to go through 10 classes. And I wanted to talk a lot about them. Go in depth as possible. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. This has been your boy, Athlete. I hope you have a good day. And I'm out. Peace.